guys welcome to today's video today we are taking a look at Wayne Goss's newest product which is the luxury cream foundation uh, with Wayne Goss on the top this collection came with a puff to apply this with and a powder to finish this with I did not get those I don't need them I like using my fingers and other applicators and I have a million powders I also have a million foundations but the quest for the perfect foundation is kind of equal to the the hunt. It's like a, it's not like hunting for a unicorn. I imagine finding the right one is like taking a morning walk in the black forest that Hansel and Gretel lived in and coming upon a unicorn with glitter sprouting out of his whatever that thing is. You know, it's it could be a fantasy. But the search is real and can be fun, and we can discover a lot of really good things in the process while we're waiting for the perfect one. So this is $38. It is one ounce, and it comes in 12 shades, which is nothing to throw a party about. You can spare me the comments down below. I saw the video. I, I heard what he had to say. I'm just saying that if you're not one of those 12 shades, you're gonna have a hard time with this. Um, unless you're willing to buy two of them and you have found one that is too dark, but the correct undertone for you, and then you can buy the right one to make it lighter. But if you have one that is the right depth of tone and the wrong undertone, it's up to you to decide. This is going to be a three-day wear test. I'm going to apply it different ways and do sheer and do medium and do full. We will apply powder products. We will apply cream products. We'll do them together and we'll see how this works with all the products. I'm also going to be using different sunscreens and yeah, we we'll, we'll just want to see how these guys meld together. If they shake hands and have fun or if there are some disagreements. I am doing swatches, you guys, but it wasn't until the second day that I decided to do some comparison swatches and texture comparisons. So I'm going to have timestamps below that'll say day one, but then there'll be subcategories under day one, swatches, uh, under day two, swatches. And it's not until day two that I start to address exactly what is in this, what the formula is. If this sounds interesting to you, consider giving the video a thumbs up. It really does help push my video out so more people can find me. If you're new here, welcome. I'm really happy to see you. And if you are a subscriber or a regular viewer, I'm always happy to see you again. Also, I just wanted to remind you that I am on Instagram and that is the underscore hooded underscore lid. Let's get into it. I also review a lot of foundations and I am going to put the link for that right up here. So let's first get into the marketing. I hope I will be able to read this without my glasses. About, oh, this is from a different video. Okay. <laughs> About Wayne Goss Luxury Cream Foundation. Discover your smoothest skin with Wayne Goss's first ever foundation the Luxury Cream Foundation. The classic cream formula glides onto skin like silk, delivering buildable coverage with a satin finish that looks and feels and wears just like real beautiful skin. No matter your age, thanks to its high pigment load, a little goes a long way. Blend it out for sheer payoff or build it up for your ideal level of coverage. Coverage, full. Finish, satin. Formula, cream. Why is it special? Classic cream formula glides on smoothly, minimizing, minimizing the look of pores, lines, and skin texture for a poreless finish. High concentration of pigments for customizable coverage levels. Mix the shades together for a bespoke highlighting and sculpting effects. I feel like I'm reading a little fairy tale, you guys. Is it Hansel and Gretel? We shall see. Now, before I go any further, I think it's important to tell you a little bit about my skin because that will help you either figure out how you should take this information 
or if what I'm saying at all is going to matter to you. If you have oily skin, maybe it won't be. Or maybe you can wait and go, okay, I'll just have to keep in mind. Because there's a lot of people here on YouTube that I watch who don't have similar skin and I'm watching their do a review and they're saying this, that, and the other thing and I'm after my myself. Uh, she's got oily skin, so I'm, I'm not going to listen to that or I'm not going to take that into account. My skin is not oily. My skin is dry. I am 59 years old. My skin doesn't have dry flakes um, and it doesn't have patches, but it doesn't produce the same wonderful things that juicy young skin produces like oil. Um, hyaluronic acid, ceramides, elastin, collagen. These are all beautiful, lovely things. My skin doesn't produce them. If I were to wash my face, which I do two days, two times a day, and not do anything to it, it doesn't feel dry to the touch, but it, it, there's nothing coming out of it except for sweat, you know what I mean? So that's my skin type. I do not have scars. I do not have texture. I do not have enlarged pores, but I do have pores, and I am not against the idea of having your skin look like porcelain. I like that. I do have some darkness from sun exposure. I also have redness. Some of it is, I believe, hereditary. I saw Lisa Eldridge once do a video and say, when you have redness down here, this is just a hereditary thing, and I do have redness down here, but I also have broken capillaries. So I do have things that I want to diminish and perfect my under eyes. Yeah, they're not my favorite place on my, on my face. So there's a lot to be dealt with here. When I sit down to do my foundation in this very chair, I have already done my skincare, which in and of itself leaves my face kind of shiny. I'm going to post my skincare right here instead of explaining to you how it gets that way. And I'm always wearing my sunscreen. And most of my sunscreens, 99.9% .9 of my sunscreens, leave my face a bit shiny. So I sit down here shiny, and oftentimes the finish that you are going to get may not be the same as the finish that I get because I start so shiny. And finally, before Lucy breaks in, and I can hear her on the other side of the door, I just want to talk a little bit about color. Color is everything to me. If you've seen any of my videos, my foundation reviews, you can have the most beautiful, wonderful foundation ever that covers you right, and lays on your skin beautifully. It doesn't transfer all over your clothes. I mean, hmm. uh, lasts all day very nicely, but if the color is wrong, it just doesn't matter because your skin looks like it has makeup on it. And I would like to have all those things in the right color. So if people either aren't sure, are you wearing makeup or is that real? Or they actually think that's your skin and you can't achieve it when the color is wrong. I remember years ago, and then we're gonna get into it. Just a little story. It's gonna be a long video, you guys. Get a glass of wine or a bottle. Um, a friend of mine, we were hiking on a trail nearby and it was the golden hour. So it was, I can't remember what time of year it was, but the sun was coming down and there was a pinkness in the sky. And she said to me, my God, your skin looks so beautiful. You're not wearing makeup, are you? Oh, she didn't say it like, are you, like to confirm it. She said, you're not wearing makeup, are you? And I said, oh yeah, I'm wearing makeup. I wear makeup every single day. It just happened to be that I was wearing a foundation that doesn't look like foundation. And it's not one that I've spoken about here because the color is actually wrong. But with the pink golden light, coming on my face, you really couldn't see that it wasn't the right color, but I've never received a compliment like that wearing that foundation in normal light. So I think this is just kind of proving the point that you can have that perfected skin, but if the color doesn't work, it's not going to matter. The color actually of that foundation doesn't work on me, but you couldn't tell because the light was kind of pink and kind of yellow and quite beautiful and you really couldn't tell it wasn't the right color, but we can't walk around holding some lights, some pink and yellow lights, like, hey, don't I look cool? It would be fun, but it's not possible. Okay, now I'm getting really silly. Let's get into the first day. 
I have already put on my skincare and my sunscreen and today I'm using the Can Make Mermaid and I'll link this below. The Can Make is a gel. I don't find it to have that moisturizing thing about it that I really like. Make Prem Essence that I reviewed recently does, but I decided I want to use a variety of sunscreens to see how this works together. So it's not drying, but it doesn't leave that um, film of a moisturizer or something emollient on it. I have the color 09. I'm going to apply with fingers, and I am going to do some comparison swatches for you to see what the color really looks like before we put it on. I did dip my finger into this the other day, and you know, recently I did my 25 year old makeup. This is what it looks like. And the foundation in that is a cream foundation. This doesn't feel like that. This feels, but I haven't looked at the ingredients, a little dimethicone. -y. And here's the swatch right here. I want to compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury number no. four, which is a pretty neutral color for me. So here's the Charlotte Tilbury, and here's the Wayne Goss. Of course, the Charlotte Tilbury will change as it dries down, but it appears to be quite a bit lighter than number nine. What are you going to do? There's not a lot of shades with this, you guys. So I'm just going to put it on the face. I have some redness on my skin. I have basic erythema, I guess you would say, where I have generalized redness. I usually have redness right down here. And I have some broken capillaries, but today I used a machine before I sat down and that made my face quite a bit red. It's been a while since I've done that, maybe 45 minutes or so. And I have a new background and I'm not sure if this is going to be helpful or if it's going to distract. We're just doing this for a couple of days. So I'm dipping my finger in. It feels kind of like it's melting to the touch a little bit. And I'm going to start in. And this is exactly the way I applied my Visage Beauty, but this feels very different. This almost has a dryness to it. So, so far, I feel that there are no incompatibilities with my sunscreen and skincare, which is very good, but it doesn't have, it's a different feeling than what I'm used to. And I'm getting some chilling right here. And I'm just taking it real slow, so if there's any incompatibility, it might be less or so. And another application I'll try. I'm getting some peeling right here. This, this little piece of darkness came from doing that. Well, I'm very curious now. I wanted to look up the ingredients. I cannot find the ingredients of my visage. Yeah, peeling. I can just feel the peeling. I don't see it for this last one. Um, okay, light coverage on half the face. I think the color is good for me. I do feel like my background is brighter than I am. I'm just going to turn off my backlights and see if that helps. I think that's a little bit better without the backlight and I'm going to Pull in a little bit, but I think this color isn't bad. Now, it's a sheer application, and when you add more, when you get closer to full coverage, you can really see where the color is wrong, but it feels like it's a pretty good match. Oh, maybe even a hair light? I, I'm not 100% sure. It's, I don't know, it's not, it feels very emollient when I do this, but when I put it on the skin, it's it's something else, and I can't really put my finger on it. I'm touching very, very lightly. Mm. 
And of course, this is not a fast application, which is fine. You know, base is everything. I'd rather spend five minutes on my base and just throw on the rest of my color products and have a really solid base. But yeah, I'm just getting a lot of peeling. On my cheeks, I have more redness, so I want a little more coverage there and around the nose. It looks pretty on the skin, for sure. So there it is, it's all over the face. And sometimes with the cream, I'll just kind of warm up my hand a little bit and press just to melt everything together. I was able to put a little bit more on the cheeks and around the nose where I have more redness. And I feel like this color is very, very decent for me and that it is more of a neutral shade. Now he says that you can use this under the eyes. I kind of don't want to, but we're going to. And he, you know, says you can buy the white one to make a color for under concealer. I didn't do that. I have a lot of under eye issues like many women my age. And I'm, I am not convinced that this texture will be fantastic under the eyes. I think it will probably crease. Okay, I'm going to move you in and I have to say it looks like skin. It really, really does. But I think it's quite pretty. I don't want a powder yet. I do want to play with some other products and see how they work all together. So I'm going to start with my Clay de Peau blush. I love this blush. It's called something peach, like perfect peach. And dot some on. I actually cut my finger the other day, so I probably shouldn't be using that finger. <laughs> worked together great, no pilling, but there wouldn't be pilling when you're going up and down. You know what I mean? It's when you're smoothing it on, when there's friction. That is what caused the pilling. I think I will go in with just a little bit. I need to get another cream bronzer because I'm sure you guys are bored to death of this. So I'm taking this Refer Brush 05. I've never actually used it with the cream, so you know, mysteries abound. I really like to work into a brush when I'm using a brush for a cream bronzer and then take most of it off. Less chance of uneven application and streakiness. With this kind of application I won't feel if there's any pilling going on, but we'll take a close look. Looks really pretty. I have pretty bad eyesight, but I don't see any pilling going on. But I, 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 don't, I don't think I really like this texture under my eyes. From this distance, it looks perfectly fine, but um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. So we have a couple of cream products. Let's do, let's do some more cream. Let's just keep on working it with different kinds of brushes and see what happens. I'm taking a stippling brush. This I think is a MAC. It is, and I'm going to go in with the Tom Ford. Just the teeniest bit. And whatever's left, I'll just put that on the eye. Okay, so no problem so far. You know what, before I sign off for day one, I'm gonna get up and look in a different room that has different light just to see what's going on. You know, I stepped outside and I looked at these swatches and I feel like the gloss might have a little bit of a pink undertone even though he's saying that it's neutral. People's interpretation of what neutral is varies widely, but I have learned and have always believed that to be and think it makes a lot more sense where neutral isn't the absence of yellow and pink, it's both yellow and pink, but neither of them are dominant, so it's in a neutral tone. Neutral is both. Like, you know, here's red, here's yellow, and they just kind of mesh together, and neither is dominant, and I feel like this might have a teeny, teeny, teeny bit more dominant 
to the red, to the cool, just a little bit over the Charlotte Tilbury. And uh, otherwise it looks really good. It does have a sheen, but I don't really mind the sheen at all, so I'm not going to powder it. And then the following days we'll try a couple of powders, we'll try other powder products, and boy, talking today. So this is day one. All right, you guys, today, day two, but before we get into it, a couple of things. How did it wear yesterday? It was a little bit warm yesterday, not too hot, but a little bit warm, and I didn't do too much. I felt like I got a gentle fade, so the coverage wasn't as much, but it was still fine. It didn't break away, but that usually doesn't happen to me because my skin isn't oily. But remember, I didn't uh, powder yesterday either. So it didn't break down or fade away or, well, it did fade away generally, but it wasn't like my nose was missing or my chin was missing. It, it wore fine. My impression was that I have foundations that are not long wear, that wear a little better. At the end, I washed my face around eight, so this was about an eight hour wear test, and it was fine. It felt comfortable. I didn't feel like my skin was tight or dry from using this product. What was really interesting and surprising to me was how good this looked under the eyes. This looked better than many concealers that I have owned. And it didn't really crease. I mean, it creased a little bit. I mean, right by the lash line. And I just went boop, boop, and it was fine. It did gather in the trough. So the trough is like the puffiness of the upper eye and then the puffiness of my cheek, like yay. And of course, the product is going to fall into there. And with some of my other concealers, I'll just kind of go like this and get rid of that excess and it's fine. With this, I did that and I had to do it again and had to do it again. But it, it wasn't bad looking. It really actually looked pretty nice under the eyes. I did feel, if I looked at a 10X mirror, that it was accentuating little vertical lines right here that I didn't actually know I had. This is just skin stuff. It's not like age lines. It's just skin that isn't taut will kind of, you know, get a little bit of liney. So that was interesting, but it wasn't something that you could see with the naked eye 100%. So that's the face and the eyes and what it felt like and what I think the wear will be like. I mentioned when I went into this yesterday that it had a dryness about it, even though it's called a cream. I really think it's more like a balm. I know it's semantics, but a cream to me is like the Chantecai Future Cream, or I think it's a gel cream or something. Um, I've had cream foundations in the past. As a matter of fact, I would say this Clay de Peau feels more like a cream, even though it is a liquid. It's a cream in a liquid form. And when I wear this, I feel like my skin has this lovely, protective, cushiony, feeling around it. It feels cushiony. That's the only thing I can say. I'm thinking about a marshmallow. I'm like, it's not quite marshmallow -y, but it just feels like this lovely, protective, cushiony kind of barrier. So it's more like a balm to me than a cream. This clay de peau feels creamy, and this has a dryness to it. So I thought, I will take up a couple of things and we'll just do a little bit of swatching and talking about the texture and then I want to get into the ingredients because I was wondering what's in this that's giving this the feeling that I am receiving on my fingertips. So the first is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 3-in-1 blah blah blah. I have had this for probably four months and I'd been meaning to do a review on it. I got it when it first came out. And then I saw people saying it was great. And I thought, you know, I don't, I don't need to die on that hill. I don't really like it very much. The color is also really orange. I want to describe to you what I am feeling is something that feels like it's melting to my touch. And I hope that we'll be able to see how when I move around, it leaves in its wake 
what's going on with my finger there. Do you know what I mean? It's quite shiny and it has a watery kind of nature to it. I put it on the hand and it just, it smooths out very easily. There's a good deal of slip of this and it feels cooling on my hand as well. I did see somebody said, you know, that this is a dupe for the Wayne Goss. It is not. It is not. Just because it's in a glass jar doesn't mean that it's a dupe. And then I want to take my beloved Visage Beauty. The label came off ages ago, so I don't know what it's actually called, but this is in my 25-year-old makeup video, and this is a fantastic color for me because of its neutrality. A teeny bit light right now. And when I was thinking about it, I think I actually did have two shades of this. Now this feels like a cream, where the L'Oreal feels like it's a water-based situation. This has a nice smoothing creaminess about it. And this will be hopefully the last time I ever go into this on camera because I do want to keep this color intact because I like it so much. And this moves around nicely, but I would say it moves around very similar to the Wayne Gauze. And I think when you see this in comparison to this, this is not even yellow, it's, it's orange. And this is quite neutral. And then we take the Wayne Gauss. The Wayne Gauss feels dry. It doesn't feel creamy like my Visage. And it doesn't feel watery like the L'Oreal. And I'm going to show you, it's more waxy. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera how different it looks when you compare it to the L'Oreal. And this is also a lovely little color swatch at the same time. And they all move around pretty much the same. I would say there's a little more drag with my visage where you really work it in and this has more slip. And like I said yesterday, I went outside and I took a look at it and it most definitely has a pink undertone, which I hope you will see when I'm comparing all three of these together. Before we put this on, I want to look at the ingredients, which I oftentimes don't really do unless something's standing out to me. And what was standing out to me was this dry feeling. So, I looked at the ingredients. I'm not a scientist, and I'm certainly not going to be able to pronounce these ingredients very well, but the first ingredient is isopropyl mystrate. And it is a clear, colorless, oil-like liquid that makes skin feel smooth and nice, aka an emollient, and does so without being greasy. What's more, it can reduce the heavy, greasy feel in products with a high oil content. It's also fast-spreading, meaning that it gives the formula a good, nice slip and absorbs quickly into the skin and helps other ingredients to penetrate quicker and deeper. So in skincare, if you have an active, that will help that active go in deeper. This is a foundation, so it's an emollient. That's pretty much the purpose. Now an emollient is something that, this is the way I see it. I've seen other people say differently, but I disagree. Um, an emollient is like a silicone or a dimethicone it lays on the skin and it smooths out the skin. So it looks good in the immediate, but it doesn't do anything to change the condition of the skin. So if you have used a primer that's very dimethicone and it's like, wow, it's filled out every nook and cranny. Whether you have texture or scars or not, enlarged pores or not, your skin looks as smooth as a satin sheet with these kinds of products, and that is what the main ingredient is in here. Then there is octal dode acyl mystrate and emollient, same kind of thing. Disosteryl malate, an emollient surfactant and used for cleansing, interesting. And then there is polyethylene. Polyethylene is the most common plastic in the world. It is a super versatile polymer, and when it comes to cosmetics, it's often referred to as microbeads. Well, it used to be referred to as microbeads. That was banned in 20, 
15 due to small plastic spears accumulating in the waters and looking like fish food. But being versatile means that polyethylene does not only come as scrub particles but also as a white wax. In its wax form it is still well alive and pretty popular. So it thickens up water-free formulas, increases hardness, and raises the melting point of emulsions and waterless balms. It is particularly common in cleansing balms and stick-to-type makeup products due to the ability to add body hardness and slip to the formulas. There's another trimethicone in here, and then there is something called, and bear with me, you guys, Destir de Modium, Hectorite. It's an organic derivative of hectorite clay. It's used as a viscosity controller and thickens up formulas to make them less runny. And it's also used in sunscreens. Now clay, you probably know, can be can have a drying effect. And I do wonder, despite the fact that these other emollients are making the skin feel so smooth, if over time this might actually have a somewhat drying effect on your skin. I also wonder if you have oily skin, if this is actually going to be kind of nice for you. Although I did see Morgan Turner say that she was getting oil breakthrough towards the end of the day and that she felt she needed to powder it. All right, so that is what I have to say about the ingredients, comparison swatches, what the texture is like. Today I'm going to use a beauty blender, I'm going to put my hair up, and we're going to put this on. I'm going to take the butt of the Beauty Blender and just pick this up. Ooh, that's a lot. And stamp on. So this application is very likely to be a little bit more than yesterday's. I'm wearing a different sunscreen today. Today I am wearing this one, the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid. And this is a lovely sunscreen that I've never had any issues with. Now yesterday I had a little bit of balling. And if I have that with this, I'm not sure if I'll be able to tell because it was really, it's when you apply with your fingers and you can feel something going on. And it could have been the order that I put on my skincare yesterday because I put on a serum that I haven't spoken about yet because I want to use it for a while before I do, but I've been wearing it for four months and I put it on after my moisturizer because I forgot about it. And that could have been what that pilling was about, but still, <laughs> it's not good. And I also spoke yesterday about what neutral means to me and it means equal yellow and pink and neither is dominant but this is pink dominant but it's not too pink however if you have very very yellow skin I don't know if you're gonna like this you might want to use a yellow powder to bring some of that yellow back into your complexion and this is certainly a faster application and I feel that it's it's more coverage as well. And I'm just going to take my finger to pick up some more to go under the eyes. I was really, really, really impressed with how this works under the eyes. Now, I did put a little 60 second short up on YouTube and several people who I'm not sure if they follow me or not if they know what my process is because several people said it's very very shiny I start shiny as you know if you're regular but if you're not regular when you see me put up day one and today day two when I sit down to do my makeup I'm shiny because of my skincare and because of my sunscreens so today I am going to do a little bit of powdering with my favorite powder so I'm going to go in with my Wayne Goss brush and my By Terry. I just don't need yet another powder. I like to coat my brush well and then shake off so it's really in the brush instead of just using it as a shovel for your powder. And I'm just going to do a little under the eye. Okay, it's looking a little dry, 
right around here. I'm just going to buff it a little bit. It's fine on the forehead. Okay, I'm going to scooch. And this is without powder, and this is with powder. Uh, it looks pretty obvious to me that with powder, the pores are filled in a little bit, so you do look more poreless. And with this application, I, I still think this side looks good. What was interesting, in, as I was lifting the brush and looking in the mirror, I thought, ooh, my pores look a little accentuated. But on this side, not so much. But I also felt like, as I was putting the powder on, this was looking a little dry right here. And I'll just powder the other side now. And then we'll be putting on powder blush and uh, maybe highlighter, bronzer, all powder products. So I feel like I will definitely want to powder this. Now, things are looking a little different when it's all powdered, right? I'm not sure that I love it, but it will absolutely change in the coming 10 minutes. Recently I got the Grillon bronzer and I love it and been using it a lot, but I feel like I'm neglecting my previous favorite, the Victoria Beckham Bronzing Prick, which I have in one. And today I'm just going to go both colors. Oftentimes I just kind of stay in this lighter color, which works amazingly well for me. I'll take some off so I don't over apply. And I'm really beginning to see the pink nature to this foundation. Usually pinks make me look like I'm tanner than I am. And I was saying earlier that I felt that I could get away with a pink when it's a lighter tone, but when it's closer to a medium than a light medium, it's not good on me. I'm not really so sure about this color anymore. Not with this application, which is heavier and with the powder. I do hope some of that radiance comes back, you guys, because I'm not as in love with the application with the Beauty Blender. Okay, let's go on to blush. Because I'm looking so pink and I'm not really enjoying that look, I thought, let me try a peach. I don't know if this is gonna work. This is like a color theory that could explode. And this is Sicily, and I think it's it's coral, and it has a little bit of glow to it. Hmm. Okie dokie. Boy, this camera really just trying to find its color zone, isn't it? I am going to go in with this Chanel highlighter because it does have a pinky beiginess to it, so I thought it might look good with this foundation. And this is actually a old Bobbi Brown eye brush. so pretty. All right, no problem putting powder products over this balm when it's powdered. I cannot speak if that's going to happen if you don't powder first, but I'm going to pull you in and we'll do a little bit one way and the other way to give you a look of what the skin like looks like. A little bit of sheen is coming back to my cheeks and to my forehead and I'm grateful for it. Super grateful. Let me finish the rest of my makeup and look at the final look. All right, you guys, this is my final look, the full makeup. I did um, the Sous Le Sable from Tom Ford on my eyes and the Hindash liner, and I'll link everything down below. I don't really know what I'm going for here, but I do think it looks very, very pretty. I mean, the overall makeup look. The foundation, I'm kind of looking at my neck thinking, not great, and I certainly don't want to match it to my sun-damaged red chest, right? So if I were to be wearing a shirt that was more of a boat neck, I'm not 100% that I like this tone. But again, you guys, this is about me experiencing it for myself and giving you an idea of what it might be like on you. If you have a pink undertone that is not strongly pink, I think you might really like this, but my undertone is a little bit yellow. 
and I'm not 100% sure with this application that it's a good color for me. Now the sheen has come back, um, but it's not as sheeny. It is, the temperature is rising. And when I was doing my makeup, I saw that there was a teeny bit of creasing. So I'm gonna pull you in and you'll see some creasing right here, right here. That's what I usually get with everything, but yesterday I didn't get it. So I want to look at that footage to see what kind of application I did yesterday. I mean, I got it right up here yesterday for sure. And I also didn't powder it yesterday. So it's not the end of the world after I powdered if I have to just pat it out one more time as long as it stays. So today is going to be an interesting test because it is going to be about 90. Um, I don't have plans necessarily to do anything that will be aggressive. Probably going to be editing. But I definitely need to be taking Lucy out for a walk later on this evening. So it will be a nice little test for heat and a little bit of exercise, but maybe not sweaty exercise. It really just depends. So I will let you know for tomorrow's video exactly what happened today, weather-wise, exercise-wise, and how it wore. I do think it looks very, very pretty on the skin. I do. And then you pull up the shirt, and I think you get a little bit of better idea of what's going on color-wise and the next time you see me I will be barefaced and we'll be doing our third day. Alright you guys, today is day three and unfortunately we have some really heavy duty clouds so the sun is in and out but I promised I would have this up on Wednesday and I don't want to take the chance that tomorrow might be better. So we're going to forge ahead. You've already seen two looks. Let's talk about yesterday. I went on with a beauty blender and I did full coverage and I powdered and I did not feel like it was a natural look. I felt very finished in a good way, but not natural. And I don't think that it looked like I wasn't wearing makeup, but it, you know, I did have kind of a strong look on yesterday. It, I felt very confident wearing this. It was a little bit uncomfortable. A little, little bit tightening, which I don't know if that's because I put on so much of this or if it was the combination of this and the powder. It happens from time to time where there's a formula that makes my skin feel tight when I add a powder to it. Um, the longevity was fantastic. I wore it for 12 hours and it looked just as good at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, as it did at 10 o'clock in the morning when I shot this yesterday. Those are the pros. The cons are, as you saw, when you put this on full opacity, you can really see what the undertone is, and it is not neutral. This is pink. And I felt like I didn't match the rest of my body, <laughs> one. Two, I felt like I was kind of tanned slash sunburned just with this kind of color. I am not pink undertoned. I have had people before tell me I am in the comment section. I'm not, I'm not. Take a look at the back of my neck here. This is yellow. Right down here, yellow. Uh, you can see a little bit of yellow right here. I'm telling you, I have a very slight yellow undertone, very slight. Another way you can tell is what color are your veins? And if it's in, describable, like you can't tell if it's blue or green, then you're neutral. And mine, really hard to tell. I'm trying to... Are they blue? Are they green? Really, really hard to tell. So neutral is best for me, and they're calling this a neutral, but it's really not. So today I have put on a different sunscreen, a mineral sunscreen. I might look a teeny bit light. This is the Dr. Jart Everyday Sun, and um, it's not my favorite, but I did want to put on a mineral so those of you who start with a slight white cast can get an idea of what's going on. And honestly, what I'm thinking of today, we know what it looks like full opacity, and we know what it looks like with the fingers, and it was good coverage, but it wasn't full coverage. I think I'm going to go back to that, and then we're going to put on some powder products without powdering because some people will start more matte than I do and this 
sunscreen is a little bit more matte than my other sunscreens and some people won't want to powder but they want to use powder products so we're going to see what that's like and then we are going to powder afterwards so I can see what that finish is like, what it feels like, and if it changes the longevity. Any updates from today will be in the description box below so I can let you know at 10 o'clock at night, you know, when I'm loading this up, what happened. I, I am kind of curious if I were to try to do this with the Beauty Blender at um, a thinner bit, and I'll, maybe I'll do it half the face because we still have the pilling question and I'm not sure I can control the Beauty Blender as well as I can control with my fingers. So I'm going to scooch in and I hope this looks okay you guys because of the light is changing but you already know I think what the color looks like because we had two good sunny days. So with this sunscreen it's, it feels a little bit uh, different. It's a little more stiff. And this sunscreen has been setting up for 20 minutes, which honestly, that's way more than I would do in my real life. And because it's more stiff, I'm not able to pull it out as much. So I think this is all about the sunscreen. So I'm just gonna pat that. And also I need more coverage right on the cheeks anyway. I guess I'm kind of, I wasn't planning on this, but maybe I'll just kind of focus on my redness and my darkness and really not go that full at all with this. Just because I'm just kind of concerned about how it's working with this sunscreen. Because I really have to go in hard. Hmm. Totally different experience. And under the eye. How to pull in and show you what I mean, like these vertical lines right here. I'm well hydrated, so it's not that, but I've never really noticed that before. But I think I've done an okay job kind of covering the darkness right here and the redness right here on the uh, cheeky cheeks. So one side with, one side without. I'm going to do the other side and we'll be right back and see how powders will work with this. I forgot already, so I just put some over here. I'm like, oh, I forgot that I said I wanted to see if I could do something sheer with the Beauty Blender. So instead of the butt, I'm just going to do that and it's not fully covered like it was yesterday. And see what happens. Obviously much faster application. And I'm just going to see what it's like to put this under the eyes with a beauty blender. It's darn fast that way. All right, fingers, beauty blender, um, they seem about the same coverage. And Lord knows the beauty blender is a lot faster. Creasing under the eyes, interestingly enough, not where I did with fingers. I'm going to pull you in here. This is the Beauty Blender, Crease City, this is the finger. So I think Beauty Blender, not the best way to do this under the eyes. Now I've started editing this video already, you guys, and I know it's going to be a long one. So rather than show you my full application of each product, I'm just going to show you a couple of seconds of each product so we can see what is going on powder-wise. Dior Rose Dentel Blush. This is a squirrel, which is much softer than a goat. And even with this, I'm feeling a little bit of pull and I am using a light, light hand. And again, that could be the function of the sunscreen. But, yeah, I don't see any skipping or anything. Now we're gonna do a little cream with my Seychelles.
and that appears to have gone on nicely. Let's do a little bit of contour with the Charlotte Tilbury and again I am using a brush that is Squirrel. And this is working very, very nicely. I'm going to use the Surratt blush that is a liquid dispersing on the hand and then I'll pick it up. Okay, no problems with the powders, no problems with the creams, so that is really good. Again, we have to take into consideration what my sunscreen was. Sun is back just in time, so I just finished the blush from Surratt. It's a liquid blush. I dispensed on my hand and picked it up, so I wasn't going to get any staining from putting something directly on the face, and it blends in very, very nicely. So the powders were fine. The first powder, the blush, a little bit of pull, but when I went over here to do the contour powder, fine. The creams went on fine. Everything's great. Just picking up the teeniest uh, bit of powder. Under the eyes, I, I, I wasn't in love with the way it looked, and I'm not loving the way it looks today either. So maybe the first day it was just damn good luck. I'm taking the teeniest bit of powder. I'm gonna pick it up with my finger. The troughing is there though. No, I feel like, no. I'm gonna pull you in with that powder, without that powder. But I have to even it up. In fact, I might go in with a brush and just see if I can get excess off. I think I'm going to leave it like this. All right, you guys, this is my final look and we're going to get into my final thoughts just a minute from now, but I want to pull you into under the eyes. This is all settled in. Am I crazy? This is fantastic under the eyes. Fantastic. All right, let's go over it, you guys. The first day I did a light layer and I did it with my fingers, which is my favorite application. I just like feeling what's going on with the skin and using the heat from my fingers, but it wasn't a good thing. There was some pilling. Now the pilling could have been because I put my serum on and it's a slightly thicker serum after my moisturizer instead of under the moisturizer. However, over that first moisturizer, which is very, very light, I put on another moisturizer and I put on sunscreen. So I don't know, it's just worth noting that there was some pilling. The wear was okay. It was hot that day, uh, not too hot. And I felt like it wasn't something that was going to be working very well for me in the summer. I didn't powder it. I thought it looked very, very pretty and looked very skin-like, and it faded kind of evenly. It is, he doesn't claim to be transfer-proof, and it is not. It actually seems to transfer, um, transfer vulnerable, more so than many other of my foundations. So you really need to be careful. If you like to pull it down and you're wearing a collar, it's gonna get all over the collar. If you're wearing an overhead shirt, be super careful when you're taking it off because I spent uh, 20 minutes washing the shirt that I was wearing that day. So, you know, that's what it is. Probably not so good in summer. Can't tell, but okay. Unpowdered, fine. Probably better in winter. So yesterday I went with a beauty blender and I went full coverage and as I said, it felt a little tight. I already spoke about that. The products applied very nicely. Yesterday was all powder. And the wear time was fantastic. It really worked. But the color is very, very different when I put it on full opacity. And it felt a little bit tight. The under eyes I didn't like as much as I liked the first day, but today I'm liking it even, even better. Um, so I was impressed by the wear. But I think the two down things were the color was much more noticeable and felt a little bit tight. Now I do see the versatility in this product. There's a lot of foundations out there that say you can go light or you can go heavier, and you can do that with everything, almost. It doesn't mean you're going to get heavier coverage. 
But this one does seem far more versatile. If I wanted a finished look, the look I got yesterday would be it. If I was going out at night, it was a special occasion and I just wanted to make sure I was putting my best foot forward, I would do it. And for a light day-to-day -day coverage, I would do it. The problem is the color. Because while this color doesn't look too terrible for me, when I put on full coverage, it is too terrible for me. And you can't add white to this and make it better. The problem isn't the depth of tone, it is the undertone, and it's not neutral. So that's kind of an issue. It can be very fast using a beauty blender. It can be very slow, which I don't have a problem with a lot of times, just really working it into the skin. So I kind of have fun with that aspect of it. Now, the whole idea of it's good for mature skin, I'm not really sure where that's coming from. There are not ingredients in here that are good for mature skin. And I'm really not too sure about that uh, clay product, the derivative or something like that for the clay, which is definitely not good for mature skin. I really think it's the, the other ingredients that I mentioned earlier that are just making everything filled out, all the nooks and crannies, and having the skin lie flat so there's no dry bits are probably what he means by it's good for mature skin. And as I mentioned, none of these things are things that will change your skin. This is in the immediate, the effect of what your skin looks like. It's not the same thing as having really healthy, good skin that you've taken care of with your skin care. Um, I, I don't know what I can say. If you're oily, are you going to be okay with this? I think it's worth looking at some other people who are oily to see what they feel about it. And hopefully they are doing three-day wear tests and they might be doing it with a primer that is a bit of an oil blocker. I think for normal skin, probably not going to have a problem with it. But I feel that no matter what, prep is important for this product. Like I noticed this weird kind of crinkly area right through here which I usually get over here. <laughs> now I am getting older, so maybe overnight suddenly something has changed, but I'm really torn on this, you guys. It's, I feel like I need to try it a few more times. And I have a lot of foundations that I love. And when I get something new that I love, I feel like I'm neglecting my little babies that are sitting here. And so it begs the question, do I love this enough to neglect my little babies? I'm not sure that I love it. I think it's more like interesting. Like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Is it going to replace my beloved Viseart Beauté? It is not. It's nowhere near this. It's not the right color. It's not the right texture. The, the coverage is the same. And the finish might be kind of the same, but this feels very, very different. If this were the right color, I think I'd like it a lot more, you guys. I do. It's kind of like an arranged marriage. It's not love, but you're married now, and you learn to love each other. Is this a foundation I could learn to love? Being that the color is so wrong, for me, no. And for me, by the way, you guys, color is everything, because I think I'm like most women where I want my skin to look really pretty. I don't want people to say what nice makeup. I want them to say what nice skin. And the number one way to not get that look is to wear the wrong color because it's so obvious. Our eyes just read it. It's not even that we're making a judgment like, oh my God, that's horrible. Our eyes read there's something wrong here. And then our brain goes click, 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 foundation colors off. So when something's off, it just can't be all that I want it to be. It is very, very pretty. It is. But I see that pinkness, and I don't actually have a yellow powder I could go over with to correct it. And I don't think I should have to, really. <laughs> anyway, we're not obligated to love every product we try here. And my goal is to help you make a decision, to help you have fewer regrets and I'm hopeful that what I've offered here today to you will just give you some insights into what this is about and I know this is probably 
the most intense and in-depth review you're going to see on this. I usually don't break down the ingredients unless there's something that just is, I'm very, very curious about. I think the last time I did something like this was two years ago when I did the Clinique Even Better mm, Clinical. And I thought, why are they calling it clinical? Because they're not saying it's not for dry skin. And it was only when I went into the ingredients that I saw that there were a lot of anti-acneic uh, skin products in there and that they would not be good for my skin. And same thing, I had this weird feeling, this weird, it's smooth, it feels creamy, and yet there's a dryness to it that I really didn't get. So I did a deep dive and hopefully it will help you make a decision. And you guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart. And I'm wishing you good health.